Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. So today I wanted to finally sit down. I've had two, on a personal level, I've had two really hectic weeks for uh, the end of school term. Uh, but also, of course, it's been a strange time in terms of the racial violence that has been happening in the US recently. And that has sparked uh, a kind of reaction uh, that feels unprecedented. I'm not sure if it is, but it does definitely feel like that. And um, I'm myself included, I've been uh, thinking about ways that I can help and that I can educate myself to do my part in uh, supporting black voices, especially for me that comes down to books. Uh, it's only one thing uh, of all of the things that you can do, but for me, whenever I am struggling to, f to figure something out or uh, if I'm trying to um, to learn, everything comes back to the books. I also um, am planning this summer to make an effort to read more um, LGBTQ books because, first of all, it's Pride Month, uh, and that has all that had already been um, a plan of mine. But today, I thought that I would share some books that I've been adding to my most sort of immediate TBR both for the uh, LGBTQ books and for books talking about uh, racism against black people, but also fiction by black authors. Uh, so I've sort of selected a few from my own library, uh, from my own uh, shelves, and I've also um, borrowed a few from the library. So first I have the library books. I uh, got out Stem from the Beginning by uh, Ibram uh, X Kendi, and this is a fairly hefty and extensive book about uh, racial inequality in the U.S. It says the definite history of racist ideas in America, and I've heard really good reviews of this. The um, I was considering getting this on audio because I know that I have access to it, uh, but I thought that this might be a better thing to have in a physical copy and to read over a few weeks, maybe uh, more of a long-term reading experience because it's probably going to be packed with information that. That is at least the impression I get from the uh, reviews of this. And I've been looking for uh, books to get more of an overview of the uh, racist history, uh, racism history in the US uh, to get more of a wide scope on the issue. Um, so I thought that this might be a good place to start. Uh, I'm also currently listening to uh, Tears We Cannot Stop uh, on audio by Michael Eric, uh, Michael Eric Dyson. And I think I will probably be listening to a few other nonfiction books as well uh, in the audio format. Uh, but this one feels like a book that is more suitable for a physical book. And then uh, another book that I got from the library is Policing the Black Man, uh, edited and with an introduction by Angela uh, Y. Davis. So this is an anthology, I think, of essays. Uh, it says, uh, let's see. A comprehensive, readable analysis of the key issues of the Black Lives Matter movement, this thought-provoking and compelling anthology features essays by some of the most, some of the nation's most influential and respected criminal justice experts and legal scholars. Uh, so I am, um, I feel like I'm fairly well read in the areas of. Um, of the uh, criminal justice system because I study criminology. A big part of the issues in terms of the legal um, racism and the problems with uh, zero tolerance policies and three strikes are out policies and the way that they strengthen ideas of uh, strengthen uh, racist ideas um, is something that I'm, I've become f fairly familiar with through um, research. This might still be really interesting and uh, give me sort of, sort of an overview of other uh, issues that I might not have read much about. It talks about everything from elected prosecutors and police accountability, which definitely sounds like uh, very timely things to read about the grand jury and police violence against black men. Uh, policing a model for the 21st century. I think that this will be uh, a good uh, a good one to pick up and to have a few things to think about and uh, to probably give me some uh, some new perspectives on the topics. And then I also picked up two books on racism in Sweden because I feel like it's 
uh, as I've heard some people mention as well, it's easy to think that racism is only going on in the US or that it's worse uh, somewhere else than where you live. And I wanted to make sure that I challenged that perception uh, for my own country. So, of course, I'm familiar with the racism that I've faced myself, but not um, necessarily for black people in Sweden. So I thought that I would uh, read two books by Swedish authors. So this is one and this is um, written by a Swedish comedian that I really like and uh, one that I had my eye on before. So I thought it might be the perfect timing to read this. Uh, it's called Sona som du ska inte vara här, which basically translates to uh, People like you shouldn't be here uh, by Marika Karlsson. And then we have uh, Johannes Anjuru's Ströma Brottes Barn, uh, which is... How do I translate that to... Um, power... Power Failure Children? <laughs> this seems kind of strange in the English. Uh, but this is an essay collection, and this is an author that has won the August Prize for his fiction. Uh, but I thought that uh, I am particularly interested in the essay form, um, and I thought I would give his nonfiction a try, and then probably uh, try some of his fiction as well in the future. I don't read a lot of Swedish books, and that is also something I definitely wanted to change. And then the last one of my library books uh, that I that I'm going to show in this video is Mary Jean Chen's Flesh. This is uh, also about racism, but it is about racism towards Asians. So this author was born in Hong Kong. And um, it also talks about queerness. So this is a poetry collection. After reading Hey Bert by Roberta Pastori, I've been really wanting to read more uh, poetry collections. And I've been looking for a few that I might be interested in. This was one of the ones that sounded interesting. Uh, then I have a few uh, black authors that I have on my shelves already and that I thought I might be trying to prioritize uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, so we have a classic, the autobiography of Malcolm X, which is mentioned in um, Tears We Cannot Stop and the, the ways that Malcolm X has been portrayed as a really violent person. Uh, I am I, familiar with Malcolm X only in the most vague ways, uh, so I think it will be interesting to read this book and also to uh, come across his names and com come across his name in other uh, books and to sort of um, to widen my understanding of him as a figure of history. And then I have Toni Morrison's Love. Uh, this is, I think, the only Toni Morrison book I own. Um, in general, I want to read her, and I'm almost considering getting the essay collection by her from the library, uh, because uh, I'm really interested in Toni Morrison as a figure, and I've tried reading her fiction before, but I found it very difficult to get into, uh, which I've heard that she is a really dense writer, so I thought that an essay collection might be an easier way to familiarize myself with her as a writer. Uh, we'll see uh, if I get to, uh, get to this one or her essay collection. And then I have The Good Lord Bird by James McBride. Henry Shackleford is a slave boy in Kansas Territory in 1856 when the region is a battleground between anti- and pro-slavery forces. When the legendary aboli abolitionist John Brown arrives in the area, an argument between Brown and Henry's master quickly turns violent. Henry is forced to leave town with Brown, who believes he's a girl. Honestly, I don't know a lot about American history, not about slavery or anything else, in terms of the details. Um, I'm not sure if that is something that we've gone into in school. American history is so... there's so much to learn, so there's... Um, there's definitely big areas that I don't have a firm gra firm grasping on, uh, so I think um, a historical fiction book might be the the perfect way to get um, to get a bit of a, an insight. And I feel like this is an author that I've come across in a lot of lists of uh, recommendations as well. So there's that, and then. Um, I have a short story collection that I've been uh, eager to get to for a long time, and that is Drinking Coffee Elsewhere by Zay, Zay Zay Packer. And I've actually read a few of the short stories in this already and really enjoyed them. Uh, I feel like the reoccur or recurring theme in this is 
um, girls and womanhood, uh, at least that was the impression I got from what I read. But I'm really wanting to read more short stories anyway, uh, so I'll get back to and talk to you more about what this was actually about when I finished it. And then the last for the black authors on this list is uh, A Raisin in the Sun, um, and this is by Lorraine Hansbury. So this also is part of my LGBTQ books that I want to read. This is a collection of two of her uh, plays and this is the other one. Uh, but the uh, A Raisin in the Sun is specifically the one that I'm interested in. Uh, I don't read a lot of plays. Uh, it isn't an area of literature that I'm very comfortable with. Uh, but I, got, I found this in a local secondhand shop. Uh, a few months ago and uh, I thought it might be as good as time as any to pick it up. Then I have a few other LGBTQ books that I have on my shelves that I'm hoping to read or at least choose from in the coming weeks. And the first one is this nondescript cover. It is uh, Estorte by Karin Boye. This is her debut novel and Karin Boye is a famous Swedish author that uh, was born in my own hometown and uh, this is her debut, I don't think it has been translated into English, but one of her other um, one of her other novels has just come out in the English translation, which is major news. Crisis has just come out in a fresh translation, and I'm really excited to see that she gets more um, uh, international recognition. Uh, but as I said, this is uh, her debut, and I think this is about someone falling in love with a... Um, like a store doll, uh, what is it called, window doll? Can't think of the the, the correct word in English, um, but I'm I've been interested to read this because I love Colin Boyer. Then I have a few comics uh, that I would like to uh, get to soon. Uh, first we have Motor Crush, uh, Volume One, which is by Brendan Fletcher, Cameron Stewart, and Bar. Babs Tar. Um, so I've been looking for uh, a few comics where I like the illustration style and this is one of them and I've heard really good things about this one. It is about a, um, a woman who is a motorcyclist. That is basically all I know and that it has lesbian romance uh, at the center of it and I love the style of this one like this. I really like comics and graphic novels and um, picture books and illustrated things. Uh, just in general, I like illustrations, but I don't tend to buy a lot of these books. I tend to borrow them from the library, so I've been uh, making an effort to find some of the things that I like um, to add to my physical library collection. So this is one of them. And uh, another one I have is Snot Girl Volume 2, California Screaming, by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. And the first volume of this was so fun. It is about a uh, fashion blogger who has pollen allergies, and she gets involved in some shenanigans and it becomes quite dark by the end of the first volume. So I've been meaning to pick up the second volume for a long time, and I finally got to, to buy it uh, a few weeks ago, but I haven't had the time to sit down with it. So uh, this is one that I will be for sure reading very soon. And Leslie Hung has some of the most stunning um, illustrations as well, this style. The last comic option I have is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Canuccia. And this is a graphic novel, so this is the entirety of um, the story. And it is a uh, story about two boys falling in love. <laughs> that is pretty much all I know. I got this from my friend who had read it and didn't like it. Um, but I am interested because it's uh, published by First Second first, second books, and a lot of their uh, graphic novels I really like, so. And then next up is a book that was on the Wainwright Prize last year. I, I'm not sure if it made it to the short list or just the long list, and that is Out of the Woods by Luke Turner. So I started reading this book, and again, it was one that I was enjoying, but I just sort of put it to the side for the moment. It is about um, Luke Turner figuring out his sexuality and doing so by connecting with uh, the natural world. It's sort of specifically talking about one wood or one forest and uh, his connection with that and the um, sort of the connection with a particular place. Then we have a book that 
Uh, again, I've been meaning to read for ages, and that is Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Generally speaking, I just want to read all of Virginia Woolf, and I've only read her nonfiction so far. Uh, it's mostly because of intimidation, the intimidation factor of her uh, writing as stream of consciousness, and I feel like I need to have the time to sit down with one of her books and to really get into uh, a big chunk of it before um, before letting go of it so that I can sort of get stuck into it. And I never feel like I have that time to dedicate to it, so I think that is what is put, putting me off actually reading her books. It's all about gender fluidity, which is something that I'm really interested in reading about, and I really want to read Virginia Woolf. So I have um, several of her books on my shelves, so this is just one of the ones that I'm thinking of. And then we have um, Yukio Mishima's Confessions of a Mask. Uh, this is an author whose previous work I really enjoyed, uh, The Golden Temple of the Golden Pavilion, uh, which I read a few years ago, and I've been meaning to read more of, her, of his books. Uh, this is, I think, his debut. And the last book that I have here is, I think it was on my Springathon TBR, but, but I didn't get to it, and that is English Animals by Lara Kay. And this is about a couple who um, they ask for a woman to come work for them to help with their taxidermy business. And there is a relationship developing between the woman of the couple and the uh, woman who starts working for them. But the theme of nature and uh, LGBTQ themes is something that I'm definitely here for. So uh, since I had it on my spring on TBR, I've been thinking about it a lot. So uh, I would really like to get to this during the summer as well. So those are a few of the many options that I have in my um, sort of plans for the upcoming weeks and months and things that I will be choosing from. I will probably be buying new books and uh, adding new books to this pile and uh, we'll see what I end up reading. I will obviously share that as I go and I think that was all I wanted to say. So I hope everyone is doing okay and that you are taking care of yourselves and I will talk to you soon. Bye!